Are you one of those digital marketeers that are attracted to the latest bit of tools and kits that we see on the market? Me too. There are so many tools and um, insights that we can get from a plethora of digital tools online. And when a new one comes along, I wanna have a look at it. And when Rand Fishkin's gonna release something, I wanna take a look because myself, as well as all the people at Social B, we're big fans of Rand, big fans of Moz, and we often read his blogs. So we're already big fans of Rand. My name's Lindsay and I'm from Social B and I'm lucky enough to be looking at Rand's latest software which is called Spark Toro. Well, I run an international digital agency so we're looking at digital accounts, social accounts and all bits of intelligence and insights all day, every day. And that can take an awful lot of time. The same thing said if you work in-house. So if you work in-house and you wanna be analyzing what your audience is into, what your competitor's audience are into, you can do it, but it takes an awful lot of time. And also if you're asking people or if you're doing surveys, then the answers they give you is often very um, structured and they won't necessarily think that you're interested in something when actually you could be. So when SparkToro released their software, I wanted to have a look. And this gives you great set of data and intelligence. I'm a big fan of data and intelligence and making some good decisions to help me and my clients increase their revenue online. But that's not an easy task to do. So that's where SparkToro comes in. Rand and his colleague have really looked at how to get under the bonnet of what people are doing online. And what better way to do that, to plug in a website address or plug in a social account and get to see the percentage of what these guys are following, what podcasts they're listening to, what blogs they're reading, what subjects they're interested in. Rather than putting all of your eggs in one basket and doing that as a manual job, this bit of kit lets you do it in a couple of minutes. You can add it to a list, you can export it. This is a serious bit of kit, which if you're gonna be thinking of adding any kit into your toolkit as an agency or in-house, I would seriously consider this. There are a couple of tiny niggles, if I give you an example, um, but I'm sure they'll be corrected over time, but they're literally just a tiny thing. One thing I noticed that if you do a keyword search um, across the globe, it works really well. If you do a deeper dive keyword research, I did a search on um, dog food in the UK, it was just picking up food rather than dog food, but that's a tiny thing and I know Rand will be on it and fixing it very quickly. So an interesting bit of kit, um, I've done a walkthrough for you, um, but we'll definitely be adding it to our toolkit. In terms of fees, if you're an internal um, digital marketer, then you can probably get away with a free one. You can get up to 10 free searches a month, where if you're an agency, you can get up to 500, which is a significant amount. So it might be that you might be able to get away with it for free, but you know, hey, Rand's bit of kit is useful. So it might be that you can pick and choose and pick one that's great for you. But have a look, have a look how I got on and see um, how it works for you. Whether you're a digital marketing agency and you want to look at what your own agency is up to or whether you've had a proposal that you need to pitch for for a client and you'll analyze their audience as part of making a proposal to them. Or you might have some existing clients that you can get some audience intel on. Um, or it might be the in-house, you might be an in-house digital marketer and you might wanna find out more about your own audience and or about your competitors. So SparkToro is a really good bit of kit for doing that um, and that's why I'm really excited about it. So first of all, I'm gonna bring it to life with as an example um, so we can have a look. So as an example, we had a um, company approach us recently that want us to help them sell more dog food. So I wanna get, I'm a dog owner myself, so we brainstormed it internally in terms of how we choose our dog food, um, what's important to us and the problems we have in terms of deciding. But we wanna get a bigger picture than that. We wanna see what these people are doing online. So the best way to do that is I could type in dog food here and I did do it, but it's interesting that people are not probably gonna talk about dog's food so much as probably they wanna be talking about their dogs. And we all know if you have a dog, you're posting at least a picture a month on social media, highly likely if you really love your dog. So you could put in dog or dogs. I'm gonna put in dogs. Um, I'm gonna pick the UK as well. The nice thing about this is obviously we know that audiences in different countries um, do different things. So it's really important if you know what type of um, country you're focusing on, then make sure you pick this as a drop down because it gives you a lot better insight. I'm currently on a full package, so you can see that I get um, around 500 queries, so I, which is quite a lot, you know, it's a lot, but I'm on the full package um, on, um, on the current thing that we have. 
So I'll go away and have a look at everything and then we can start to see what's going on under the bonnet, what the people are talking about online, which is, um, which is exciting. So as Rand touches on, you can do this manually, but it's a very manual job where this is now a two minute, a two minute search and it gives you a really high level, very quick, very quick view. So you can start to see the audience size, um, the similarity and the audience confidence, high confidence, because it's quite a specific product, um, quite a specific um, area. And as you can see, people who talk about dogs, obviously they may or may not have dogs and you need to take this as insight and intelligence and do a bit of a you know deeper dive as well so there might be people that are interested in dogs charities that might not have a dog or obviously you're going to get accounts like dogs trust bad to see rspca that are going to be talking about dogs all the time because that's what they do but it's interesting in terms of the percentage of people that follow up with these accounts as well so there's there's a high percentage of people that are obviously not just dog owners or interested in dogs you know they're really passionate about trying to care for them in the wider um, area as well in terms of um, other websites they visit, um, there's some interesting sites here, some charity stuff again, um, but it gives you an interesting insight. Um, and the thing that I found really interesting in this is this, is this. So if you're looking at podcasts that people listen to, there's some interesting things here around emergency, and there's no there's no like dog mentions here in terms of you know how to train your dog. Some interesting things like this one here. Um, the W. Williams Deming Institute. I would have not, never in a million years, would I have thought that potentially 15, 16% of the in, um, people who are talking about dogs are interested in that um, that podcast. So I would definitely, that's you know a new bit of intel for me. I would go and have a look at that. What value does that add to me in terms of if that's my audience? Um, I'd be having a listen to those podcasts and just try and familiarize myself in why they might be listening. Um, do they take sponsorship opportunities? Um, and is there some sort of collaboration we could do sponsorship opportunities or interviews um, and collaboration and also um, other types of channels they're following as well and then audience insight you know where are they based the highish percentage in London um, also Sheffield Manchester and you know dog lover cats mums um, quite a lot of people call themselves you know dog mums and dog dads type stuff and I only know that because I'm a dog owner myself I don't call myself that but just from seeing what people get online and um, what people call themselves online so it's really interesting bit of insight just to get that snapshot in terms of what they're up to but I now want to start looking at some competitors sites so um, websites that sell dog food um, and dog, dog, dog food subscriptions natural dog food subscriptions and get a bit of intel there so um, you can do that intel by in terms of looking at um, just google and doing google searches on you know natural dog food um, dog food subscription service and you will you will see companies so butternuts butternut box is a company i've come across and i want to get the intel on them so what's going on under the bonnet in terms of that website i can see their audience size is small moderately diverse low confidence size, so something to bear in mind. I can see there's a lot of overlap in terms of the social accounts that we saw earlier, which is interesting. Um, and in terms of podcasts, this one came up in the last one as well. YouTube, again, they're following these sorts of accounts. So in terms of potentially um, running ads um, on these YouTube channels, potentially you could be running ads on these channels, um, or you could look to collaborate with these channels as well. So it gives me a good quick bit of insight in you know a two minute search. And then in terms of um, location again we're seeing London um, and up north as well which is good so it gives me a good bit of insight um, from that point of view and I could do another um, another search here as well if I wanted so it's a really handy bit of kit to give me that insight I could also look at their social account so if I just flick back and have a look at their social accounts so let's just grab their social accounts here because they've got them let's use Instagram An example so let's stick Instagram in here it follows this social account so it's going to go away and search and the nice thing about this is as you will know as digital marketers whether you're in an agency or whether you're in-house data is only as good as the data if you can turn it into intelligence so you need to use data and intelligence to make a a good decision or you know a more crystallized decision in terms of what you're going to be doing going forward so you can look at this and there's lots of data in here but you then need to use some intelligence and do a bit of a deeper dive on some of this to really understand it but it's a really good insight to to give you that step very very quickly 
So here's a in more interesting bit of insight. Um, Instagram, um, again, another similarity. So you can see there's a lot of similarities in terms of brands that someone consistently follows, whether it be website visits, social channels, that subject. So it's really useful to see these. And what you can do is add these to lists. So I'm thinking, okay, dog trust, I've seen that across all three. Let's add that to my pet food sector list. Um, and we can then export that list great um, later, which is handy. Um, and let's add this one to my list as well. And this one. And then if I scroll down, we're starting to see a couple of other things. So City AM, that didn't come up. Um, so clearly people are interested. And obviously City AM is mainly based in London. But again, you'd need to know that. So it's not just looking at it. You need to understand in terms of where these things are relevant. And then podcasts as well. So again, this one's come up again. So I'd be adding that to my po um, pet food sector. Um, and other channels they follow. So you can see some consistency, which is really good. Um, and also common words used, so pets, dogs. All of this is consistent across every bit of insight, which is useful. So whether you're talking about dogs, whether it's looking at button up box, um, or whether it's looking at their social channels, there's a lot of similarity, um, which is great. You could also um, compare audiences if you wanted. So if you wanted to compare audiences who follow their social account um, let's do button up box and let's do um, let's do pets at home I'm just going to grab their Instagram now and have a look let's just see if there's some overlying factors why is this useful um, this is useful to see if you've got accounts overlapping in terms of um, are there audience similarities so as you can see here um, obviously button up box audiences are a lot smaller which you would naturally get because pets at home for anybody that knows pets at home they don't just sell for dogs they've got cats guinea pigs fish you know they're a massive national um, pet store so but there's going to have some similarities so in terms of what people are sim sample accounts so Costa Coffee, um, Men News Desk, um, Stacey Dooley obviously Stacey Dooley is a bit of a pet fan she's got um, a dog and she's very passionate about um, um, all sorts of insights which is great um, and the whole dog journal and then you've got dogs, mums, animals. So some interesting overlaps. And then you've got websites that they overlap. So Creative Blog, um, BVA, Mind, um, so around mental health. Um, so I'd definitely be having a look at this type of insight in terms of are there any similarities that we can then use in terms of content or collaboration or advertising. And then you've got top hashtags. So if you were thinking about what hashtags to use. So if you were comparing these two audiences, if you were coming to market, then potentially some hashtags that you would want to make sure you do a deeper dive on or of would be dogs of Twitter, um, a dot don't shop. Um, if you're if you're not a, a you know a, a company that's um, that a breeder as an example, puppy adopt pets. So some really good insight here to then help you make some decisions. But obviously this data is only as good as the data it's you know it's only numbers or insight at the end of the day if you then don't put some intelligence behind it so that's really handy but as you saw earlier i was then adding it to lists so where do my lists go they go over here um and i can then export them which is really nice because um, i hadn't investigated this bit earlier when i had a first quick look and i was thinking oh, i'd really love to to export stuff but good old rand um, and his colleague they've thought we absolutely want to be exporting this data and the nice thing is they also over, overlap it with in terms of sort of a Spark Toro score out of 100, which is great as well. So it just gives you in terms of um, what type of insight there and social followers. So it's a really handy um, tool. Um, and as whether you're an agency or whether you're in-house, as I've touched on earlier, it can, there's lots of great tools out there, but it's really thinking actually, can this tool be useful for me? The other bit of insight you can do is profile search. So if you head over to profile search, you can click website and you can put in button up box as an example, um, the website I was looking at again. And if you click on search, it will say, is it this website to make sure you've got the right one. And then it gives you um, all the insight in terms of um, frequently used words, bios by the account that share this domain. Um, their social followers. It gives you a quick insight in terms of their audience size, which is nice. It will tell you other websites that they um, visit and what frequency, um, frequency of keyword use. So this is sort of a high level summary, um, high level summary side of things. So if you just want to look at a domain, that's really handy as well. So overall, um, I think this is a handy bit of kit. You might not need to use it all of the time. Um, you know, 500 crews a month is a lot. 
Um, but if you are a big agency, then that would definitely be worth the queries. But, you know, SparkToro is great. I think you get 10 free searches a month anyway. So that's probably enough if you are a in-house organization or you're just a small agency and you just want to do a couple of searches a month. So I hope my review and walkthrough has been useful. I'm really happy to take any comments or views in the comments box below. So please add them and let me know how you're getting on with it as well. Um, we use all different types of tools, but I'm keen not to use a tool just for the sake of it. Um, if you don't need that data, then it's not useful. But I really think that this bit of kit is amazing. The other bit of kit I'm a massive fan of is Follow Wonk. So it's sort of similar ilk to that. Um, and I'm still a big fan of Follow Wonk. And if there were other tools that did that, this is the one that's very similar. So definitely worth adding to your tool kit. So thanks Rand. Thanks SparkToro. Great bit of kit and can't wait to start using it and saving us and digital agencies and digital marketeers around the world a bit of time and great bit of intelligence. So thanks guys.